I don't know what went into that process. I met the criteria to be selected, but I wasn't. For anyone who's watched the Last Dance documentary, we all remember this hilarious moment. But for anyone who hasn't, first of all, what are you doing? Like, go watch it. But anyway, this is Isaiah Thomas talking about the time he was snubbed from being on the 1992 Dream Team, which was the first time the U.S. was allowed to have NBA players on the team. Previously, only amateur athletes were allowed to play, so it was a pretty big deal to be on this team. And with 11 out of the 12 roster spots being future Hall of Famers, some players unfortunately had to miss the cut, and IT was the most famous of them all. It's been widely speculated that the reason Thomas didn't make the team is because Jordan didn't like him and gave Team USA an ultimatum that if he's on the team, then Jordan will not. And if you have a choice between Michael Jordan and Isaiah Thomas, you're picking Jordan every time. See. These two have been enemies since the very beginning, as when Jordan made the All-Star team in his rookie season, Thomas told the other All-Stars not to pass the ball to Jordan as a way of teaching him who the big dogs really are. Shortly after that, the Pistons would be known as the Bad Boy Pistons due to their dirty and reckless tactics while playing, and would go on to beat Jordan's Bulls in the playoffs for three consecutive seasons in 1988, 1989, and 1990. However, by the 91 season, the Pistons were starting to show signs of aging, and the Bulls took over, sweeping them in the conference finals before going on to win the NBA championship over the Los Angeles Lakers. As for the Pistons, that loss was the beginning of the end for their dynasty, as they would never make it past the first round of the playoffs again. And right before the series ended, with six seconds left in this blowout loss, Isaiah Thomas said, screw this we're out of here, and led the team to walk off the floor while the game was still going on in order to avoid shaking hands or showing any kind of sportsmanship to the Bulls after the game. This was the moment that ruined Isaiah's chances of being on the Dream Team, and if Thomas had showed some class and stayed on the court, he definitely would have made the team based off talent alone. Or would he? See, take a look at this picture again. Do you see how much talent is in this photo? Because if we put Isaiah Thomas on this team, that means that we would need to cut one of these guys from the roster. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why don't we just get rid of Leitner? I mean, he's clearly not as established as any of these other superstars. So why is he even on the team? Well, that's because Team USA didn't want to fully break the old tradition and still slotted one spot for an amateur athlete. And they decided to go with Leitner. Now, it's pretty bad that they decided to go with him over Shaq, but it is what it is. So, if Thomas can't replace Leitner, who else could he replace? Well, before we figure that out, let's first eliminate the guys we already know he's not replacing. David Robinson, Patrick Ewing, Charles Barkley, and Carl Malone all play power forward or center and won't be getting replaced by a point guard. Things get a little complicated though with Bird and Magic, as Bird, who was 35 by this time, dealt with a lot of back injuries over his final years, which hampered the little athleticism he had to begin with. Magic, on the other hand, was still in his prime in 91, winning three of the last five MVP awards and finishing top three for nine straight seasons. However, that all changed the next season when Johnson was forced to retire due to contracting the HIV virus. Despite this, Bird and Magic were still selected as the team's co-captains, and it simply wasn't going to go any other way. This is because Bird and Magic were the two biggest names of the 80s, and the NBA was not going to pass up an opportunity to bring in more viewers to watch these guys play in the Olympics. And with Jordan, I mean, I guess somebody could replace him technically, but uh... Yeah. Let's just move on. So that leaves us with four possible candidates, and let's start with the only other point guard on the team, John Stockton. I wish I could say this was a closer race, but to be honest, it just isn't. Stockton has Thomas beat in almost every statistical category other than points per game, and even there, Stockton's shooting splits were significantly better than IT's. 
And if you want to look into some advanced statistics, they still heavily favor Stockton as he has far more win shares, a better PER, and true shooting percentage while having considerably lower usage rate. And to put the nail in the coffin, Stockton would also be named second team All-NBA in 92 and third team All-NBA in 91 while being selected to the second team All-Defense in both seasons. Zeke hadn't been on either team since 1987. Okay, so if Stockton's not getting replaced, what about Chris Mullen? Because out of these 11 players, it's pretty safe to say that Mullen was the least accomplished, as he had a relatively short prime and could never get his team out of the second round in a stacked Western Conference. So Thomas should have the clear advantage then, right? Mm, not quite. You see, Mullen was in his absolute prime in the 91 and 92 seasons, averaging almost 26 a game on 53, 34, 86 shooting splits. The 92 season specifically was phenomenal for Mullen as he finished sixth in MVP voting and was named to the first team All-NBA after just being selected to the second team the year prior. And once again, when you compare Thomas's numbers to Mullen's, they just don't stand a chance. And with the advanced stats also heavily in Mullen's favor, there's really nothing left to be said. Next, Let's take a look at the other small forward on the team, Scottie Pippen. Now, looking at the basic stats, it's clear that Pippen had a decent advantage over Thomas by averaging more points per game on better efficiency, in addition to more rebounds, blocks, and steals than Thomas. And that gap widens even more when you look at the advanced numbers, as Pippen dominates IT in every advanced statistic, including offensive win shares, defensive win shares, box plus minus, and PER. Pippen was also selected to the All-Defense team in both seasons, as well as being named second team All-NBA in 92. And with the Bulls coming off two straight championships, there's no way anyone could leave Scotty off this team. So we have just one player left to analyze, and that player is Clyde the Glide Drexler. Now, I wanted to talk about Drexler last because the selection committee originally picked 10 players in September of 91 with the intention of picking its 11th member after the 92 season was over, thus giving everyone else one more season to prove their worth. And that guy ended up being Clyde Drexler, who took a major leap averaging 25 points, 7 assists, and 6 rebounds on 47% from the field and 34% from 3 on 4.5 attempts per game all while leading the Blazers to a conference best 57 wins en route to their second finals appearance in three years. For Drexler's efforts, he finished second in MVP voting and was named to the All-NBA first team. He also finished top 10 in offensive win shares, defensive win shares, win shares per 48, box plus minus, and PER. Drexler's incredible season personifies why the committee chose its 11th member when they did. And unless your name is Michael Jordan, you weren't stopping the glide in 92, and neither was Isaiah Thomas. And that's that. The fact is, is, Isaiah Thomas's game was declining and simply couldn't meet the standards required to make the roster. He also didn't have quite the legacy that Magic and Bird had either, and throw in the fact that IT had a bad reputation around the league, he was never going to make the team to begin with. So I hope this video made you realize that whenever we do call anyone a snub, do your research because that means someone who was selected has to be replaced. And to be honest, that's just not always the case. That's it for today's video. Thank you guys for watching. And I'm about to start posting more consistently, so please subscribe for more content. And other than that, my name is T Pointer, and I'll see you guys next time.